Good morning. We have a couple additions to our service uh, that I just want to uh, do a run through on. Um, primarily our dismissal. Um, it is one of my favorite customs to do a sun dismissal um, for uh, the season of Easter. So, if you want to turn to page 16 in your bulletins, we'll give it a shot. <clears throat> okay, so it sounds like this, and don't judge me, Janan. Uh, <clears throat> Let us go forth in the name of Christ, alleluia, alleluia. And this is your part. Thanks be to God, alleluia, alleluia. Want to try it together one more time? <laughs> Thanks be to God, alleluia, alleluia. We're so good. Okay. <laughs>
On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. us our sins 
and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with our, the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We stand for our sequence hymn and the proclamation of God's song. Nothing wrong here. Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, was one of the twelve, and was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the marks of the nails in my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here, and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. My Lord and my God, in the name of the Father, 
of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So this first Sunday after Easter is affectionately known in many churches as Low Sunday. Um, and I won't make any other uh, comment on this except to say that the Gospel reading for Low Sunday is always John's account of Doubting Thomas, which I've always found to be a rather unfair moniker. <clears throat> Thomas is one of the only figures in the Bible who's got an insult attached to their name. We don't call Peter denying Peter, and we don't call Judas betraying Judas, but, but we call Thomas Doubting Thomas, which is bizarre because doubt is something that is not foreign to, to any of us. That this, it, it's not foreign to us right now. Because doubt is essentially uncertainty. And in life, we often feel uncertain about things. And we're in this time of amplified doubt, where we've had to ask some new questions of our faith. We doubt whether there is going to be a return to normalcy. There's financial doubt, which is very real for many. There's, uh, there's been those relationships that have frayed during this pandemic, and there's doubt that people will be able to love us, uh, having spent this much time without us. But on the deepest level, we doubt God and God's presence. And there's the doubt that Easter, um, there, there's doubt in the face of death. And we doubt the hope of the resurrection. <laughs> but let's look at the scene for today. Um, you'll, you'll notice that the disciples are in the room and it's behind a locked door. Um, this, this Easter time when, when life is supposed to be full of joy, these men have reports that, that you know, some have seen the risen Christ, and, and you think that their hope has been fulfilled, and yet the disciples are in this room, and they are afraid, and they are cowering. There's some hope and some excitement, but, but it's also the evening time. There's also darkness. There's this reserve of, of fear and confusion, even though the resurrection is, is behind them. And yet we're told that Jesus comes to them. I mean, he doesn't come to them in, in, in any place. He comes to them in their isolation. He comes to them. Um, he comes to them. Um, Jesus finds the disciples just as he finds us. The message being that Jesus is not found on the other side of fear and confusion and withdrawal. Jesus is found when we when we get our. He's not found when we get back into our comfort zone. Jesus just comes to the disciples, and his greeting is not a chastisement or a finger, but. A simple peace be with you. He breathes the Holy Spirit on them, and, and this is the only Pentecost event that we get in John. There's no pyrotechnics or speaking in tongues or anything like that. There's the simple resurrected Christ passing the peace with his disciples, those, those who betrayed him, those whose faith has faltered in the midst of adversity. Peace be with you. And what about Thomas? Um, because Thomas is not present when Jesus first breaks through the door of that dark room. Jesus, though, comes back for Thomas. Yeah. He comes back just for him. And when he sees this Thomas who says, I will not believe unless I'm able to put my finger in his wounds, when Jesus sees this Thomas, he doesn't rebuff him or lecture or reprimand him. Jesus moves toward him and invites Thomas to touch him. This comes right after his injunction, his, his commandment to the other disciples, that if any person sins that they forgive, will be forgiven. Thomas's lack of, uh, lack of belief, it, you know, his unbelief, it, in the midst of, of ten reliable witnesses that are his friends, you know, you could call that unbelief a sin. We talk in the Christian faith about the root of all sin being some kind of unbelief. But here you have Jesus coming towards Thomas in his doubt, but also his failure to believe and to trust in spite of all the trustworthy people around him. And again, he comes in not with a lesson, but with an invitation, with grace, in other words. Today I have uh, an image that is very dear to me. I'm not usually one for sermon props, but here we go. Um, <laughs> It is an icon of today's gospel, which is Thomas touching the wounds of Christ. 
And it's dear to me because uh, the Thomas portrayed in this icon is one of my mentors. It's his, his visage, um, but the Reverend Thomas Johnson. Now, I gave Tom uh, last rites a few years back. He ultimately died on a beach in Mexico, so those prayers don't always take, but, but when, I, when I administered those rites, uh, we felt that he was on his deathbed in, in that hospital room. And I specifically remember his fear, his, his tears, his doubt. He was surrounded by his family, and the loss was palpable. And I just, I remember the fear and doubt of a priest, a missionary, a man who was the general secretary of, of a Franciscan order of over 200,000 folks who had taken vows of poverty, chastity, chastity, obedience, and his doubt in that moment was profoundly disturbing to me. So I have this icon, this image that I hang on to. Um, Tom is not willing to go on hearsay. But, but needs physical uh, touch and reality in his distress. And Jesus looks down at Tom as he's putting his finger into the Lord's side. And I like, I like how he allows this action to, to just take place of almost a, a plaintive invitation. He makes himself more accessible to Tom rather than less. And you see the surprise that you know, that in spite of all that you think should be true, you see the love on both of their faces. And Tom realizes what is true. And his response is one of the most dramatic pronouncements of belief in the entire Bible. It's not, oh, it's you, uh, but, but it is my Lord and my God. My Lord and my God. And those are the same words that Tom Johnson taught me to say under my breath at the elevation of the bread and wine of the Eucharist. Yeah. Every time that I, I break that bread over that altar, or hold that bread over that altar, I say, my Lord and my God, as I touch the body of Christ. You know, most of the time we hear the story of Doubting Thomas as kind of a fable of, of doubt, and how doubts aren't the end of the world, and how doubt is a good thing. We, we want to, to lift it up as, as something virtuous. And doubt is clearly a part of faith. We, we all toggle between certainty and doubt, or, or faith and doubt, and, and it's painful. No one wants to be in doubt that their, their spouse loves them, for example. Um, it, you know, what I want to hear uh, is that, you know, there's no doubt about it. That, that's what I want to hear when it, when it comes to God as well. And that's, that's what Thomas receives. The gospel here is not that, that doubt is somehow virtuous. The, the message is that the grace of God comes to doubters. It comes to those who doubt. And to them, Jesus offers compassion and grace and mercy, even to them, even to those who refuse to believe who find that more comfortable, or those who can't bring themselves to believe. Jesus doesn't come to them with another question or, or doubling down on doubt. He comes with an invitation. He comes with himself, with, with a relationship, with good news. The good news that, that the deepest doubt, the doubt about death, has been answered, in fact. Jesus connected Thomas, not, not arbitrarily, but, but through his wounds. It is the wound that Thomas sees. It's the wound that he longs to touch. And this is how Jesus comes to us. Not in our, our mountaintop experiences or, or when we get it all together, but, but in the places where we are frail, where we are full of fear and uncertainty. His wounds are not incidental. They are a visceral, visceral reminder and proof of God's presence and covenant of you and I. And it isn't by, impeded by the thing that we have the most doubt about, which is physical death. Christ does not abandon Thomas, and he doesn't abandon him to his doubts. He does not abandon his disciples in their fear and confusion. And he doesn't abandon you either. Not to doubt or danger or even death. And that is the Easter hope. No doubt about that. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Amen.
Christians, please stand and confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one in God, God, the Father, Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, and the only Son of God, eternally begotten the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not the day, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate in the Virgin Mary and was in again. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come in and glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, and the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all can be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your words and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. That light of perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. We all ask them not to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Today we pray especially for Melissa, Susan, Ken, Rainier, Kate, Steve, Shay, Baby Elvia, Sarah, Layla, Carl, Jenny, Bob, Nancy, Randy, Justin, Ashley, Eric, Charlotte, Lisa, Tom, Frank, Andy, Derek, Sharon, Dina, Guy, Pat, Kyle, Rachel, Debbie, Mary, Lee and Joan, Elsa, Becky, James, Mike, Patricia, and all essential workers, medical personnel, and healers. And any petitions, intercessions, and thanksgivings you would like to add, either silently or loud. Amen. Give thanks for the gift of reconciliation. We pray for all those who work for peace. Pray for end violence and injustice. We pray for the repose of the soul of B and Ed Bott, who were buried from this church yesterday. We pray for all those who grieve in this time of illness. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church, and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city, where the Father and the Holy Spirit, you live and reign, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also so with you. Time. Share with one another and sign of that. Karen. Yeah. All right, is this working? You may have noticed that Sean is not here, so I'm like really praying that this tech stuff is working itself out. <laughs> um, 
But on that note, if there is indeed somebody on the other end of this camera, um, welcome to All Saints of this whole church. Uh, welcome to all those who are present on this low Sunday as well. Um, I have very few announcements to commend to you, um, other than uh, what was sent out in the newsletter um, uh, yesterday. Um, we have formation offerings, and we'll hopefully continue to have more in the coming weeks as we're sort of playing with the idea of um, hybrid groups and, and spiritual formation opportunities. So we might be able to like interface in another way other than this. Yeah. So um, that would be lovely. Um, one more piece of music that I want to practice before we get to the big show. Um, you'll notice on page 13 that we're going to have a song fraction anthem. Uh, this one is one of my favorites. And um, it's pretty easy on your end. I promise I will be most of the singing. But um, your part goes. Um, so um, I, will, I say every part first, and then you say it back to me. Um, but you, you just do the, the antiphon up the top. Um, so, the disciples yeah. knew the Lord Jesus in the breaking of the bread. Yeah. All right. Okay. The which is your spiritual vision. Father Almighty, Creator of Heaven and Earth, 
but chiefly are we bound to praise him for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death, he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. God is 
gifts of God for you who are the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. The body of Christ is the remnant. Nah. Nah. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. the bread of heaven.
We thank you for giving us the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and to serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. And by the blessing of the Holy and Undivided Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, rest on you this Paschal tide and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn is Good Christians All, the Joy of Sin Stay. Found here.